I now want to bring in retired four-star General Joseph Votel. He was the former commander of U.S. Special Operations Command and Central Command and is now a distinguished senior fellow on national security at the Middle East Institute. Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Let's dive right into this because based on some of the video that the IDF is putting out, does it appear to you as though uh, al-Shifa is a Hamas command and control center? And what are your key takeaways from what we're seeing right now unfold at al-Shifa yeah, Hospital? It's, it's great to be with you. So, yeah, I mean, I think this is kind of what I would expect to see. I mean, some some military material that comes out of this. But the, the benefit that the Hamas derives by using tunnels, using uh, infrastructure underneath al-Shifa Hospital is that they use the cover of this hospital to conduct their... Uh, their military operations. That's that's the real value. I know we're looking at a picture here of of, uh, of, a, of an apparent tunnel entrance. That's that's the value to them. Uh, and and uh, you know we shouldn't necessarily think we're looking for a command and control center like we might find in our Pentagon or in the IDF Curia or someplace else. Here, I mean, they oftentimes these irregular organizations conduct a lot of their uh, their command and control through the use of cell phones and messengers and other things as well. So it doesn't it doesn't necessarily mean we're going to find exactly what we would have in this particular thing. Um, certainly um, they're, they're deriving a benefit by conducting their their activities underneath these civilian populated areas, mm -hmm. especially hospitals. Based on what we are hearing from Israel, that they are conducting these ground operations in a way that is methodical. They say they are obviously being careful to try to mitigate civilian deaths. What do you make of how it is unfolding so far? And in terms of a timeline, I put this question to my colleague, Raf Sanchez, but how long would you anticipate this type of a campaign to last inside of the hospital specifically? Yeah. So, you know, based on my experience, I think in these heavily, heavily dense urban areas, I mean, this could be even in the hospital complex itself, which is not just a hospital structure, but a, a, a series of buildings around there. I mean, this could take a week or several weeks to get all that. But again, going through the broader urban area that surrounds it, um, underneath which uh, Hamas is operating, this this could take weeks to months um, to do. It took took us nine months to clear the western half of of the city of Mosul when we when we fought, when we were assisting the Iraqi security forces. Again. So it gives you an idea that this is this is very slow going and it is very very deliberate uh, in terms of how you have to move through this. Um, Israel, as you know, is telling people in southern Gaza to evacuate. And of course, the question is, where are they supposed to go? They don't necessarily even feel safe being in southern Gaza. But what does it tell you about the strategy and what we might see in the coming days? Should people there be bracing for a bombardment? What it tells me is, is that we're missing the important collaboration between military planners and military operations and the humanitarian com uh, community. And again, this is something we've learned over time, uh, that uh, you, there has to be a level of collaboration between uh, military forces and governments that are conducting and supporting these operations and the, and the humanitarian community community to make sure that we establish corridors, that we have assembly locations, that we have supplies, that we have ways that we're communicating to uh, to the civilian population, the things that we want them to do. Uh, I mean, this is this really makes the situation, I think, extraordinarily complex. I mean, these are panicked groups of people that are trying to comply, but there's not much uh, information out there for them to um, to use. So I think it adds to the adds to the, the uncertainty and the difficulty of this situation. And to me, this idea of, of this collaboration is just so important. Um, it's it's important for Israel to, to accomplish their missions, but it's also important because they they will have to live in this area afterwards. Mm. Well, and you take me to my next question, actually, because what do you think we will see happen to this area once this war is over? Israel has been very clear. They believe they will have a security presence there. And of course, some people have said that that amounts to effectively occupying Gaza, which the United States does not want to see. Do you think, though, that Israel will have to have some type of a presence, a security presence in Gaza once the war is over? 
Well, I, I think it's likely they they will, and and certainly after they clear through these areas, they they probably will have to uh, account for the security situation and 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 providing that until others can get in there. But but I think this highlights I think the third leg we were talking about military planning, we talked about humanitarian planning, and it is this political governing planning that has to take place. I mean, what what we want to do, what we've learned about this is you have to get local people in control of these areas after military operations take place. So they they are responsible. So you don't have military forces that aren't set up, aren't organized, aren't designed for this uh, doing that. You have people that, that have a link to the people. And then you have to make sure you're bringing in the immediate resources that people need to resume their lives. Uh, water, power, sewer, um, food, medical care. Uh, you have to provide for removing the explosive hazards that are left behind uh, from the fight in these areas. So th these are the types of things that that I hope others are thinking about as we as we step into this, because this will be absolutely critical. I mean, these people that have been displaced will want to get back into their homes soon. And, and it's to their and it's to it's to Israel's benefits, to the region's benefit for them to do that. But they're going to need a lot of help. And then we have to plan for that in advance. There's no doubt about that. General Joseph Hotel, thank you so much for your time and for your perspective. We really do appreciate it. I agree with you. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.